a quick new idea daily from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Today, we're going to hear from scientist and entrepreneur Juan Enriquez. In his talk, he examines ethics through the lens of technology and how advancements shape the norms that each generation lives by. Just think about your own social media feed. Technology has made it easy for us to share every thought, reaction, and opinion. But would you stand by everything you've ever tweeted? As we look back from the supposedly enlightened vantage point of the present, Juan advises us to take a new approach in judging the past. Um, normally, I talk about science, and today I'm going to talk about ethics. And the reason I'm going to talk about ethics is because there's been a lot of distraction from science by people who are certain that they know the answer. And part of it is promoted by ourselves, because when we take a new job, we get this great big book that just drops on our desk, and it's the ethics manual. And the ethics manual tells you this is right, and this is wrong, and it's pretty black and white. And it's one of the most boring documents ever written by a human being. Right? I mean, if you don't know this stuff by the time you take that job, you shouldn't be in that job. Because it's telling you stuff you already know. And I guess the question that I want to address today, and particularly in today's climate, which is slightly polarized, is who's teaching us what it is to be ethical? So I'd like you to take about 10 seconds in your own minds and just think through who taught you right from wrong? All right, now that you've got the answer in your minds, here's some of the answers that sometimes you get. So you have a holy book that tells you this stuff, and mama teaches you, and the preacher teaches you, and the teacher teaches you, and the lawyer teaches you, and the doctor, and of course the government, and a whole bunch of other people, your peers, and Facebook, and Twitter, and all kinds of good ways of learning right from wrong. If we're going through this culture war during a time when technology is changing stuff very quickly. It's changing who we speak to, it's changing who we talk to, it's changing what we can do. And in that context, ethics doesn't become black and white, it becomes 50 shades of gray. <laughs> I don't think we understand how fast and how radically technology is changing us. See, the fundamental act of evolution is sex. No sex, no evolution. And we take it for granted that we've been redesigning sex. So how do we think about this? Well, bring back grandpa and grandma, and let's have a birds and the bees talk with them. OK? But instead of bringing them back as nice white-haired folks, we're going to take a time machine, we're going to bring them back as hormone-filled 18-year-olds. So you now have your four grandparents sitting in front of you, and you're talking to them about sex. Hmm, that's an interesting conversation. <laughs> you can now have sex and not have a baby. Do you understand how weird that would be two generations ago? Because every animal in every human generation normally sex equal conception. And now you're telling them, oh no, we can have free sex and never conceive. Now let's come back to the ethics. Had we polled society, should you do this, two generations ago, they would have said, hell no. And they would have taught never do this. So how do we establish the ethics for the next generations as technology changes what you can do? Technology has a lot to do with changing the future. And as we sit here today, now try the same thought experiment. Have your grandkids, age 60, bring you back and tell you about sex. Do you think sex and conception and reproduction is going to look the same two generations from now? How do we establish an ethical conversation on that? How do we decide what should be allowed, what shouldn't be allowed? Do we need a certain humility to judge the past and to establish the rules for the future? Because they may be doing things that we might find really strange. And just as the last series of points, 
it may be that we are doing things today that will seem pretty darn unethical to our kids because technology changes the boundaries of what is allowable. Technology sometimes drives very different ethical mores. When you have an alternative, and you don't have to go vegetarian, and you can still eat meat, when there are clear alternatives that are by technology, so we don't have to do this, how do you think they're going to judge us? So let's teach a little bit of generation, a little bit of ethical humility, both to our own generation and to the next generation, as this collision between ethics and technology takes place. Let's be a little less self-righteous, a little more generous, and a little bit less judgmental towards the past, and hope the next generations are less judgmental towards us. Establishing civility in conversations is going to be really important. Understanding where the other person is coming from, what they were taught, is really important. Helping bridge towards what we discover is the right arc of history, which I think we're on. I think this is the best time to be alive, despite all the stuff that's going on there. But we need patience. We need humility. We need to reach out. And we need to build bridges. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Berlin, Germany. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Berlin. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Visit our website at ted.com slash TEDx Shorts. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.